welcome back to another one of my glamorous videos where I talk about spirituality, health, and wellness, and how to make yourself a better you. If you want to see more of my gorgeous sex on your timeline, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more of me, of course, on your timeline. Now let's get straight to the video. Today, I'm going to be talking about something that has been on my head for a while, which is being a first generation American um, in my family. I know this is something that a lot of people can probably relate to. So I just wanted to make a video um, stating my struggles as of mixing the black culture the black american culture and the black african culture together in one um how both sides see me and how i basically identify myself and just the confusion of it all um a lot of people on youtube seem to be talking about like how they're not black enough in the whole oreo experience which i can most definitely relate to believe me i can but i haven't seen a lot of people on youtube talking about basically how they don't feel African enough. I haven't really heard a lot of African kids talk about not feeling African, especially when you grow up in a different country than where your parents are, you know, were raised in and having to go around those people um, for like certain events or anything and just feeling kind of out of place. So I guess I'm gonna be the first person not only to talk about um, feeling out of place in the African community, but also feeling out of place in the black community as well. And having that weird gray area of just where to identify yourself. So if anyone else has this feeling of just not feeling belong in each side of your culture, please let me know. Cause I would love to talk to you about how you basically deal with it. Cause um, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. And if this video resonates with you, please make sure to comment as well. I would love to talk to you guys more. So yeah. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is the African norms I was raised around as a child. So as a child, I was mainly around my mom. I was a really sheltered child. I was inside a lot. I was just around my mom majority of the time. And my mom, she cooked African food. So I'm very, I know about fufu, saka saka, cassava, all that. I know about African food as well as a lot of African movies. If y'all watch Passion of the Soul, comment down below. If y'all watch Beyonce, comment down below because I would love to talk about African movies with somebody because honey, I was, I was raised on African movies, man. I was. My mom also worked at a at a hair salon that was full of African women. So I was not only I was around my mom, who was an African woman, I was around a whole bunch of African women um braiding, braiding hair, playing literally African movies literally all day. I would be there from the early morning into the night to when my mom got off. So that was my dose of African my African culture and while being a first generation American and being raised around someone who literally immigrated to America in their um in their 20s I can see how I seen how my mom struggled in communication when it came to certain things whenever it came to like literally us ordering pizza I would have to order the pizza for her when it came to like the whole literally just anything like i would just some of course she got better with her communication over time but just if anybody understands what i'm talking about i know somebody's gonna understand what i'm talking about please comment down, down below even though i was exposed to african culture i can say since i was raised in america i resonate more with american culture or 
Black American culture. I'm putting heavy quotations on Black American culture because I don't, I don't wanna, I wanna offend nobody now. I, you, you, you know the internet now, child. I don't wanna offend nobody, but I was raised uh, around the majority of kids whose parents were born in America and they were born in America as well. So, of course, <laughs> I was there for the Fetty Wops. I was there for the Nicki Minaj Super Bass. I was there for the Katy Perry's. I was there for it, honey, and I was living for it. Um, but when it came to uh, me being in school around that time, nobody really kind of helped when it came to the whole integration process. Um, or like me, me identifying myself as well. Like I knew I was African, but I also knew I was American as well. So whenever people would ask me, and, and I feel like I still kind of struggle with it. Like, oh, like what are you? And I'm like, or where are you from? I'm like, well, I'm born, I was born in Georgia, but I know that they're asking me that question because I, I look, I look African. So I always specify, but my parents are from Africa, specifically Congo. Um, so when it came to being a bl uh, African student in a black school, um, I can say that my student, my classmates, thank the Lord, didn't really tease me. I got African booty scratcher literally once when I was a child, but it wasn't like a well-known thing, like, oh, she's African, because it wasn't something I just walked around saying, oh, I'm African. The only time that people just knew I was African was like my last name. My last name is spelled M-B-E-R-I, which is Barry, um, or Barry, but a lot of people like watch my name all the time. So they're like, oh, where's your name from? Oh, it's African, da da da. So growing up, I did feel like I had to be different because I was the first generation American of the family. And I did have an older brother who got into gang violence, which is literally every African's, African parent's nightmare. It's like they go to America and like their kids goes buck wild and starts acting like one of those ghetto black kids. So like I owed it to my parents to not be like my brother and not kind of turn that path. So I, ended up on literally the opposite side of the spectrum, which is kind of pushing my blackness away, almost to the point where I hated being black. Um, and that is a whole nother story upon itself. If you guys want a story time about how that um, particular time in my life worked out, I'll most definitely be willing to make one. So me pushing my blackness away looked like not listening to rap music because I didn't want to be ghetto and only listening to Katy Perry and Lady Gaga. I love Lady Gaga. I, I don't regret it. I don't, I love Lady Gaga, I mean that. And watching my dialect, of course, I'm from Georgia. I have a little bit of a Southern twang that comes in and out, but I did watch my dialect when it came to certain things and Due to that, I was called an Oreo. And of course, on top of that, me being a dark-skinned black girl and just maneuvering that around the whole like 2010s thing where, where the hashtag light skin winnings and, and whole, it was, it was just a lot of things that I was going through at that time and a lot of just identity issues. The whole social media thing popping off and colorism. I was honestly confused on where I was in my life. I felt too distant from my culture, even calm myself African, but I distanced myself away from black culture so much that I couldn't even relate to certain things. So it was a weird, I was in a weird, awkward middle ground that I don't think anyone knew I was where I was coming from or knew how to help because I was still confused about it myself. When I went to live with my dad, that was the first time I've that I was around my family for a long period of time. 
So that was the first time I was around a large amount of Africans for a large period of time. So it was a huge culture shock when I went over there because literally everyone around me spoke a different language. And I was the only person that only knew how to speak English. So I had a lot of awkward interaction with my family member. Some of them just either thought I was like denying my culture in a way and others were just kind of just being straight up rude. Not cool. And like certain things were when it came to like the whole cooking and cleaning thing just threw me off guard. The whole picking up after a man and like certain things in the African culture that I wasn't, I'll say introduced to when I was growing up since I was raised by a single mother, I cleaned up after myself. And of course I cleaned up that, up after my family, but it didn't dawn on me that I have to clean up after every freaking man in my family. So that was something that I felt like I was forced to get used to and just being around a whole bunch of African people made me feel less African. I felt like I didn't belong and whether they realized it or not, they made me feel like I didn't belong. They made, I felt like I had to conform and had to fit into the box that was never made for me. They, they understood that yes, both of your parents are from Africa, so you do have African blood within you. But at the same time, I felt like they also tried to reject and push aside that I was also born in America. I was also raised around other American kids. So inevitably, I'm going to be categorized or looked as an American. So I seen a lot of people trying to neglect or forget the fact that I'm also as American as I am African, I'm not going to push away one part of myself because the other one kind of domin dominates the other. I see myself as both equally African as well as American. So being around other Africans, it was kind of like a weird thing of like comparing me to other people my age that I'll say knew more about the culture, knew how to cook the African food or knew how to oh, actually knew how to speak the language. Me constantly being compared to other American kids that knew more about the culture than I did, which again, made me feel less African. This manifested in me feeling like I have to prove myself around every African that I'm around. Like every African is going to challenge my Africanness every time I'm around them. Like, of course, I love bumping into African teens, like our African, like African men and women like my age, like which are like in the twenties. Um, and we, of course, we laugh about like certain things, like certain things that other people won't understand that only African kids understand. After those interactions with my family members, I kind of feel hesitant and almost scared. Like what if I do get into a relationship with an African man and he acts just like my father, basically expects so much from me. Oh, oh, you're an African woman? Oh, okay, well then you know how to do this, you know how to do that, you, you expect this, I'm expecting that. I do not want that. And that is something that I am admittedly scared about. What if I bump into an African man and he, and he of course like, oh, you're an African woman and he expects, expects all these things and I, I can't serve him that. Whether people see me as African or whether people see me as American, that's none of my business and I don't care. I'm, at the end of the day, I know who I am and I know what are my morals. I know how I've been raised and I know how to carry myself. Me being African or me being Black or Black American or me being whatever the hell I am in your head has nothing to do with how I actually show up in the world. So whether that makes someone uncomfortable or whether that actually makes someone feel great, it's up to you, man. I'm just here to deliver the message and just put myself out there. If anyone else 
has ever felt this way, please, please comment down below and, and let me know. I would love to have a conversation with you. You can't be the player.